Good morning, everyone. So glad to see you all here today, and some of you have your red on as we celebrate Pentecost, one of the truly holy celebrations. My name is Von Lewis, and I'm one of the pastors here, and we're just so glad that you're all here today. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. I'm Pastor Steve Copeland and wanted to make a few announcements as we make our way into Pentecost. It is good to have you with us and if you're a guest with us for the very first time, please don't leave without getting uh, one of our hospitality bags just around the corner in our fellowship hall before you leave. It is an honor to have you with us and we want to recognize your presence with us today. Let me remind you each Wednesday at 1230 there's a Bible study right here in the church. And it's a wonderful time I use um, to lead that as we look to the upcoming Sunday's lesson uh, to be preached. And we go over it and um, pray over it and let the Spirit lead. Also, as we look at opportunities to gather for education, there's a wonderful uh, time uh, every other Saturday, practically. And one's coming up June the 11th. Is that right, Greg? Yes, that's what I thought. June the 11th, the Breakfast Club. Uh, for us to come 9 o'clock to uh, 10, 10.30, uh, and this is a grand time to come for education. We think about announcements. There's one big special announcement. We're going to see a video here in just a moment about what we can do as um, a church and as a community to help.
Amen. Thank you, Kelly. That was beautiful. Will you please join me in the call to worship? The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The Spirit comes like a breath, bringing life to renew the people of God. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. Would you please stand with us as we worship? <laughs>
Wonderful. Awesome. Yes. We come to a time in the life of our church when um, it is indeed a day of celebration, not just for this particular day all around the planet when the Holy Spirit is celebrated, the birthday of the church, but here in this church we have opportunities to welcome new members into our uh, congregation and this is a deed a happy day in the life of the church we welcome these to come, come on up, these. yes please come come forward if you're uh, if you're able we have uh, several opportunities to come to recognize you as our new members Introduce everybody. <laughs> you want to use some microphone? Uh, sure. Okay. No, Kate? <laughs> no way. <laughs> We are truly blessed to be able to celebrate this day, this Pentecost Sunday, by bringing so many more into our fold. What a, what a lovely, lovely, uplifting and wonderful affirmation of some of the things that this church is doing. Hopefully, um, you'll join us in our ministries if you haven't already and, and really uh, get to understand what it's like to be the body of Christ. So we welcome you. So I want to welcome everybody. This is Leanne Senauer. Senior. <laughs> Senior. Senior. Uh, <laughs> Mich <laughs> Michelle Kraft. Um, Glenn and Pat Senior. Senior. <laughs> uh, Janet Crawford, Renee and John Schuler, and Greg Williams. So welcome. Mm -hmm. And 
All of these folks are already members of the church because as a matter of polity, they have to be uh, brought in by, by your session, your elected session, but this is the celebration of theirs. And we just ask that they make a public declaration of their faith, and so I'm gonna sit over here and face them. And the answer to this first one, hopefully, is Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Do you trust him? I do. Do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? I do. And I want, I want to charge the whole church with this last one. And if you'd all answer, we do. So it's, will you be faithful members of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way? Will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? We will. Well, <laughs> so Pastor Steve, will you pray for us? Yes. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, I, I think the angels are dancing. This has been something that this church has been praying for for some time. And we give you thanks for the Spirit bringing them here to this place, to this time, for this service, to be your people. Let us welcome our hearts wide open with the opportunities to be one community church together, serving you and bringing glory and honor to you. Bless each one that is gathered here, new members and old and families, O oh God, that come to this place, that truly we would be drawn by your spirit to be transformed, to be like Jesus and to serve him with gladness. Bless us this day and all that are gathered here. In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pastor Steve, I know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Luke chapter 15 verse 10 says that the angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner repents. And I'm sure they're just as happy when people are willing to be part of, of God's church. We're just so excited. And, and this is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Let us pray. Excuse me. Heavenly Father, we, th we thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. We thank you for the privilege to come here this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for those who have decided to dedicate their lives to you, Father, <clears throat> through service in our church. And Father, we're just so thankful for all who are here and for all the, the work that is put in, Father, to do your business. Father, I pray for those who desired to be here today and weren't able to be here this morning. And thank you so much for those who are here. Father, I pray that we would truly worship you today in spirit and in truth. And Father, I pray that we not only be hearers of your word, but more importantly, that we be doers of your word. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. This morning, I'll be preaching from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And as we are, the different songs we're being sang this morning, I was just thinking about how unbelievable, how amazing it is that the Bible tells us that, that we were made just a little lower than the angels. And I don't see how in the world I'm a little lower than the angels because I can't do near the things they could do. But for some reason, as human beings, God sees us in that high of a light. And I just never be able to get over that. And then I think about before I got saved. And I won't even tell you some of the things I was doing before I got saved because you'd probably throw me back out of the church. <laughs> but I just think about for years, I didn't go to church, didn't read the Bible, didn't know Bible verses. 
and for all the other things in my life that I did before getting saved. And as the Bible says, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know about you all, but I will never get over the fact that God is so faithful to us, delights in us, values us, and loves us so much. So much. And there is nothing that we can do, nothing that we can do where God won't separate our sins as far as the east is from the west. All we have to do is just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. We serve an incredible God. There are a lot of human beings that if we've made mistakes like that, they'd cut us loose and be done with us. And God, as great as he is, loves us so much and is so faithful. And then on top of that, any promise that there is in the Bible that's made by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, it's always kept. And I don't care how much family loves you, friends love you, children love you. People will let us down sometimes, sometimes on purpose. Sometimes they forget. God never forgets. Aren't you so thankful that we serve a God that when you read a promise in Scripture, you know that it will be kept. I'm so thankful for that. This morning for a little bit, I'll be talking about how the Holy Spirit enables us to do God's will. And I know for me, it has to be the Holy Spirit, because otherwise, I wouldn't even be standing up here. You know, and I was thinking, and you all have heard me share this before, that it amazes me that God has allowed me to be in ministry where he uses me to speak before people, whether it's funerals or weddings, preaching or teaching. And I was such an incredibly, terribly shy child and teenager. And it's amazing how God will put people in your lives and he'll use them to prepare you for ministry when you don't even know that he's going to use you. And I think about how shy I was. And I used to be so put out with my mom. God rest her soul. She's in heaven now. And uh, she would make me, we were Catholic in and, and mass, she would make me, she got me involved with the church where I'd have, to, I'd have to go up and read scripture. I was so mad at her. She was preparing me for a day such as this. When I would sell candy and different things for sports, she'd make me get on the phone and talk to the people. I hated that. But she, God, I know God spoke to her, and she never told me this, but I know God spoke to her heart. And he said, you need to pre prepare your son. I'm going to use him one day, and he's going to have to get over being shy. And I remember as a teenager, I was scared to death of girls, <laughs> scared to death of them. they come over to my house, and, and I, I, if, if I didn't know they were coming and I answered the door, I was ready for them to leave, just so shy. And how the Lord has used me where now I don't know how to shut up. They use me in ministry. We serve a powerful God. The day of Pentecost came. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And Pentecost recalls the giving of the laws that Moses gave to the Israelites 50 days after they had crossed to Red Sea. And in Greek, the word for Pentecost is Pentecost and it means 50. And there were about 150 people that were in the upper room when the Holy Spirit came. Acts 1, 13 through 15 tells us that. I always think about the movie Life, where Eddie Murphy was in that movie, and Martin Lawrence. And in one of the scenes, they're talking about the upper room, and they say, the upper room? <laughs> and there were 120 people who were in the upper room when the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came from heaven. In verse 2, it says, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And as I read over that, there's not a it's not a coincidence that Scripture says that the Holy Spirit came from heaven. And some people might well say, well, duh, where else would it have come from? But as human beings... We have a tendency to only want to believe in what we can see. And there are many people who are lost today. 
that they can't believe in a God because they can't see God. Or they can't believe in God because they say all the terrible things that happen in the world, how, how can there truly be a God when there's so much pain and suffering and hatred, killing that goes on in the world? And there are so many people that can't believe in the Bible because there's not a publisher that they would say. It's just a, it's a, just a book of fairy tales. God knows how people can be. So the word tells us, for those who are doubting, that the Holy Spirit truly did come from heaven. And that's so important for us to understand that. Because I think sometimes when people think of God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit is kind of like the, the little brother or the little sister who's forgotten about, or, or how some people say, why are you treating me like a stepchild? I think the Holy Spirit sometimes is seen that way as not being as, as holy, as not being as divine or godly as God the Father and God the Son. And I truly believe here, and after Luke wrote this book, he wanted everyone to know, hold on, wait a minute. The Holy Spirit is eternal, just like God the Father and God the Son. The Holy Spirit lives in heaven. That's the Holy Spirit's abode. So we need to recognize and respect who the Holy Spirit is and what he does for us. In John 14, 26, Jesus told the apostles, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I said to you. And you think about when Jesus told the apostles that he not only sent the Holy Spirit to them, but that's a promise to us also. And shortly after that, Jesus would die a terrible death on the cross. He would be humiliated, beaten, forced to carry that heavy cross over a mile. People mocking him. He never said a word back to them other than, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And to me, what's just so amazing about that, you ever have a friend and you loaned them money or you did something from them and say, oh, I got you, man. Next time you need a ride, I'll be there for you. And then they forget that they borrowed money from you and they forgot to pay you back. Or they forgot that they said, I appreciate you so much for giving me a ride or being there for me. Next time, I'll give you the ride. Next time, I thank you so much for taking me out to eat and paying for everything. Next time, I got it, man. And then when the time comes, they're not there for you. You're eating at the restaurant and the, and the, the waiter or the waitress brings the bill and it's awkward. Like, you're thinking, dude, you told me you were going to pay this time. And then you end up paying it. And if you say something to people sometimes, oh, I'm so sorry, I've been so busy. Jesus was really busy preparing to die on the cross. He was real busy. And people were humiliating him, beating him. He was in the ground for three days. He didn't forget that, to, 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 to tell the Father, please send the Holy Spirit to them. And that's what I love about God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. God is never too busy for us. And every promise that God makes to us in the Bible, we just have to do our little bit, and that promise will be fulfilled. I'm so thankful for that. I don't know about you all, but I don't know how I can make it in this world if I didn't have the Holy Spirit of God in me. I'm so thankful for that. The Holy Spirit is divine. The Holy Spirit truly is God. And there are 32 different names in the Bible that, that are used for the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to name a few of them. In Hebrews 9.14, it's called the eternal spirit. And that's so important because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have no beginning and have no end. As you hear me say often, no birth certificate, no death certificate. Now, if the Lord comes back and the way things are going in the world, 
I wouldn't be surprised if the rapture takes place in our lifetime, and I look forward to that. But outside of that, we will all have a death certificate. But the Holy Spirit is truly eternal and divine. Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth because the Holy Spirit is only truth, divine truth. As Jesus always would say, I always do what the Father wants me to do. The Holy Spirit is the same way. Aren't you so glad that the Holy Spirit is truly a spirit of truth? When Jesus told the apostles and us, I'm going to ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit. Aren't you so glad the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth? What if the Holy Spirit said, Father, Father God, they don't deserve me. I don't think I'm showing up. Could you imagine that? What would the world be like without us as believers in the Holy Spirit? It's crazy with us here. What would it be like if we weren't here with the Holy Spirit in us? I'd be like, Lord, just take me home now. I'm ready to leave. The world has gotten so crazy. But you know what? It's an opportunity for us who have the Holy Spirit in us to truly make a difference, to be salt and light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is divine power. 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-discipline. In verse 2, it said, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Only our God can do this. And just, just think about this. There's 120 of them, about 120, men and women, were in the upper room. And this sounded like a violent rushing wind. It was roaring. Then it says, it filled the whole house where the believers were sitting. I don't know if you have any meteorologists in here, but usually strong wind happens outside, doesn't it? How was there a strong, violent, rushing wind in the upper room? Only our God could do that. And they you can't, well, you can't say, well, they had, no, they didn't have a fan. They didn't have electricity then. How was there a strong, violent, rushing wind inside in the upper room? And you know, oftentimes, God wants to show people who he is so we can recognize his power and, and see that he is truly worthy to be praised. I don't know about y'all, but the kind of person that I am, If you don't know more than I do, I don't want to hear what you got to say. I'm not going to learn anything from you. If you aren't better at something than I am, then how are you going to show me how to be better? We serve a God who was far superior to us. And I know in my own life, there are often times that without the, the power of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be able to get through a day. I remember how distraught I was when baby Amina was giving my daughter all kinds of fits. And they had to go to the hospital two times and she was admitted. Her fever was 103. And I was so worried. And I had to cancel Bible study that day. I just, I couldn't even concentrate. All I could think about was how my little baby Amina granddaughter was giving my daughter so many fits. And thank God, I could go to God in prayer and he took that burden away from me, and praise God, she turned a month yesterday and is doing beautifully, other than being really cranky. So praise God for his power. And the Bible tells us in verse 3, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And one of the things I was thinking, it just tells us just how powerful God the Father and God the, the Son and the Holy Spirit are. I was thinking, hmm, how did the Holy Spirit know who was okay to rest upon and who not? Because the Holy Spirit is divine. He's omniscient. He knows all things. We don't. Thank God that it's not 
the job of somebody in the church to decide who gets the Holy Spirit and who doesn't get the Holy Spirit. Whew, that'd, be, that'd be sad. There'd be people, if one of my pastors used to say, who would be lost is three left shoes, and some of us might give them the Holy Spirit if it was our job. Praise God that the Holy Spirit is omniscient and knows what we need. Everyone in the upper room was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when, when, when the scripture says they are filled with the Holy Spirit, it means you're fully influenced, you're fully controlled. And that's when we can really serve God the way God desires us to save him. I know there's sometimes when we're in ministry, and I think this all the time, when I hear people singing, oh, I wish I could sing like some of y'all could. But I know you're filled with the Holy Spirit because when you're singing those songs, they move my spirit. They speak to me in a way that nothing else can. I know that you're, you're fully influenced with the Holy Spirit when you're singing those songs or you hear someone preaching God's word and it moves you. And sometimes people will say, I felt like that pastor or that preacher was speaking just to me. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the person who's filled with the Holy Spirit. Or the Holy Spirit can convict a person. And I think about how lost I was for 24 years. It had to be the Holy Spirit that ran me down. And I was fast. I went to state and track and football. I could run. The Holy Spirit still ran me down, tackled me, convicted me, and said, listen, you need to listen. Vaughn, you are lost. You are filled with sin. You need to acknowledge that you need to be saved from your sin. Ask God to forgive you. That's the Holy Spirit. Because I wouldn't have listened to anyone else unless they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I know that pastor who led Lori and I to the Lord, he was filled with the Holy Spirit because I was too ignorant. I was too sinful to realize that I was lost. Praise God for his Holy Spirit. And I know many of you can identify with what I'm saying. Verse 4 and 5, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. That's a God thing. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, people could speak other languages. They didn't take any, the Bible didn't say, they didn't go to one class. They didn't listen to one tape. One CD, nothing on the internet, and they could speak other languages. And then, have you ever been to another country and heard someone speaking another language and didn't know what they were saying? The people who were in the multitude, the crowd, who were outside of the upper room, they understood what they were saying in their own language. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God. And I always say this, God will never let human beings outshine him. The Holy Spirit was also assigned to the unbelievers in the crowd. Verse 7 and 8. They were utterly amazed. And they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Because all the, the, the apostles except for Judas were from Galilee, the region of Galilee. Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language. I can tell them how. It's God. We serve a mighty God, an incredible God, that is able to do more than we could ever imagine, what we could ever think. And you know what else? When we receive the Holy Spirit, God can use us in ways that we didn't think we were capable of accomplishing. Look at how our church is growing. Two or three years ago, some of us probably didn't think that could happen. I wasn't here then, but I'm sure some of you were just wondering. Have you ever wondered how you could get through a day because so much is going wrong in your life and then how you get through it? That's God the Father and that's God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. They were amazed that they could hear people who were speaking in different languages. And they are from countries all over the world. And I won't even take time to read all the country, but countries from all over the world, people who spoke different dialects and different languages. They were amazed and perplexed. They asked one another, what does this mean? I tell you what it means. It means that we serve a God who is all-knowing, who is all-powerful, 
who was holy, 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 and he still loves us so much that we're sinners. And while we were yet sinners, Christ still died on the cross to save us from our sins. And then on top of that, when we get saved, he makes sure that the Holy Spirit goes to the right person. Wouldn't you hate it that you order something from Amazon and the package goes to the wrong address? Aren't you so glad that you have the Holy Spirit of God who resides in you? God never makes mistakes. He didn't give it to the wrong person. He made sure that when we got saved, we all received the Holy Spirit. And the crowd continued to be amazed. And in closing, verse 13. And it was like this 2,000 years ago, and it's still like this today. Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. If someone wrote this book now, they might would say, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much weed. They've been on that meth too long. There's always going to be people who aren't going to believe. And as sad as it is, it's a fact of life. And for us as believers who God has saved and given us the Holy Spirit, it's urgent that we reach as many lost people as we can. And we don't know who all they are because we're not all knowing. God just wants us to be faithful and teach his word, preach his word, and share the gospel, and then allow the Holy Spirit to do, to do his work. There's a large field out there with many lost people, and God needs us to reach those people for his kingdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for asking the Father to send us the Holy Spirit. You know just what we need. And Father, thank you when we accept your Son that we receive your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father. Make us a soul-winning church. Make us a disciple building church, Father. Use us in a powerful way to change Monroe, Hamilton, Fairfield, Liberty Township, Butler County, the world, Father. Use us in a powerful way. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
We come to the time in our worship where we celebrate giving. We've received the word of God. We have made way of gathering together and celebrating our life together with new membership. And now we come to the part of giving of ourselves. There is a box in the back that is our offering box. We don't pass a plate because of the pandemic, but we do take an offering. And we encourage you to remain faithful to God in making good habits of placing uh, an offering either in an envelope and sending it to the church office or getting online and clicking on our website and making that or calling the bank and saying, hey, I want to set something up and just put it on automatic and forget it but I do want to be faithful in my habits of giving. And today we celebrate that part of our worship is giving of our time, our talents, our treasures, our prayers, our presence to God. Let us pray. Oh God, use us as you see fit. All the blessings your spirit has poured over us for some time now and to this very breath and we celebrate that you have given us so much we give back to you now and ask that you would multiply our efforts our prayers our presence our giving O god so that others will come to know your saving works in jesus christ the living one who has brought us to this day and whose life has given us eternal peace in heaven itself Hear our prayers now as we sing our doxology together. May be seated. Pastor Vaughn's going to lead us in a prayer for intercession as we pray for those concerns around us and in our world. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, who has filled us as we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, use us to be salt and light in our community and throughout this world. Oh, Heavenly Father, there is so much evil in our world today. Father, I pray that, that we would be a praying people, Father, because we know that prayer can truly change people's lives. Father, just use us in a powerful way. And we lift up our, our government officials, Father. Give those who are believers, Father, give them wisdom and give them direction to make decisions that will represent you, Father, and make a difference in our world. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask our ruling elder, Sharon, to come to the table as we come to the Lord's table for Holy Communion together at this time. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all might and power, we praise you that you forged your church in the fire and uh, of the Spirit and breathed life into your people that we might be the body of Christ. We rejoice that our Lord came to rescue us from sin and to deliver us beyond the grave to a rebirth and renewed, renewness of life. 
By your spirit, refine our hearts with your flame of faith. Fill us with the breath of zeal. Inspire us with the witness of martyrs and saints. And send us forth into your world to live Christ's life in power and compassion. Take us, O God, and shape us according to your will in the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, and shed for you for forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. Unite us with Christ and with all who trust in him that we may be one in ministry in every place. At this, as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Set our hearts aflame with a love for the truth and the d desire to do your will. Make our witness to Christ burn brightly and keep us faithful until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. His body broken for you. Take and eat. His blood shed for you. Take and drink. Pastor Vaughn, would you lead us in a prayer now, Pastor Vaughn, as we have celebrated the Lord's Supper together and as we give thanks for the power of God to continue to work in this church and in the church of Jesus Christ in every land. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for how much you love us, how much you value and esteem us, Father, for how faithful you are to us. We thank you that you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to save us from the proper penalty of sin. He was willing to have his body pierced and his body broken for us. We thank you eternally. Amen. Let us sing. Would you stand with us as we sing one last song?
blessing. May God's Spirit fall afresh upon you and refresh you so that you find your way of sharing the love of God with one another, knowing that what you give, you will receive tenfold again the Spirit yet to give more. God is using you as a vessel and his spirit is wanting to flow. Let us celebrate and give thanks. This is our blessing. He loves us so. And now, for our charge from our ruling elder Kevin as we leave this place. Thanks be to God. Let us go and serve the Lord.